Okay, uh, I've got some sounds. I'm good to go here. This is going to be the pre-recorded screencast that I promised I would do uh, because of the conference. And so I wasn't going to be able to be with you Thursday. So I'm going ahead and getting this done. And then I'll have it posted here for you. Um, the conference, a lot of the stuff's going to happen uh, this afternoon. So I wanted to reserve the time this morning to try to get you guys taken care of. Anyway, uh, on Tuesday, okay, we covered this hands-on exercise from the POTSI text, pages 448 to 452. We did some work with that uh, table, uh, the one that's the computer-related jobs outlook. And so this is the file that you'll want to upload here for the workshop credit. And you'll also want to, again, review, if you didn't, the uh, screencast. So today, we're going to work on this hands-on number seven, Microsoft Excel hands-on number seven, and this is from the POSI text. And I'm going to go ahead and download the jobs file and then I'll upload the finished product here for you, okay? So we're gonna do some work. Over on page 463 in the POSI text, they talk about uh, working with charts, okay? So we're gonna do some more of that and I, and I think I expressed enough in terms of about how to handle the elements of a chart. And we did some charting anyway. So, so I'm gonna take the, this original file, the EO3H1 jobs, one jobs file, and I'm gonna download it, okay? And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then it's here on my desktop. Actually, yeah, this is the file from the other day. And I'm going to rename it. EO, I'm just going to simply add my last name and my first name and then 10, 3, uh, 10, 3, and I'm, and I'm going to call it, then I'm going to add October 3, 2019. That way it's for today, for Thursday, okay? So I'm gonna open it up. I've renamed it. I make sure I save it. Enable the content and go back to that file. On my PC, on my desktop. And there we are. And now I'm ready to work. I've, I've taken the file from temporary status. I've downloaded it. And I've made it a real authentic file by saving it to my desktop. And now I'm ready and I'll do the work. And when I'm finished, you'll upload it for uh, that second workshop credit. Okay. So let's start with that. We're over on page 460, pardon me, 463. And they talk about the chart elements. And so they're gonna have us do a little bit of work that, and I'm gonna highlight, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of work here again, all right? And I've got some, I need to do some more work. If, I'm, if the chart's gonna be any good, I've got to make sure that the table's fixed. So I'm gonna come here in, in column A, uh, A5, and I'm gonna put, job title, uh, 
Okay. And then here in B5, then in B5, I'm going to put 2010 number of jobs. Okay. And I'll have to maybe quench this out a bit. And then I've got 2020 estimated number of jobs. And then the I'll size these columns out. Then I then I have a, a number of new jobs, and then I'm going to have percent growth. jobs okay. and I have median 2010 median pay. That way I have a true table. Now these devices again at the top are nice. When you can split them out that's fine. It's pretty but on the other hand it, it does prohibit you from really if you're going to do charting or you're going to do sorting like we did yesterday or you're going to apply filters you really just need to have the full set of headings. And these are nice, but they're, they're extraneous. Okay. So now we're going to do some more work with charting. Okay. So I'm going to highlight, and I, I'm roughly following what we're doing in page 463. All right. In fact, they tell you use the one you use the hands on uh, number one, uh, but we're going to, that's okay. Uh, we're going to, go ahead and, and just follow along here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with figure 332 and that's a formatted chart title. So we're going to do that. We're going to start with doing a chart chart title. So I'm going to highlight cell A5. I want to do other thing before I do that. I've got a hidden row there that row 13. There's row 13. Now I'm not sure what the author, why the author, oh, I, okay. Yesterday we used it for totals. So let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna unhide or pull, uh, resize, row 13, I'm going to highlight it all the way across. In fact, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Here in cell A13, I'm going to put total. In fact, to set it off, I'm going to put it in all caps. Okay. And then for the number of jobs, it's simple. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to use the sum fact. I'm going to use the sum, auto sum it. There we go. And then for the estimated number of new jobs, and I can even just simply drag and drop this, drag this across. Okay. And the job growth. And I can, that's another aggregate number I can use. And the growth in percent and the median pay um, I'm going to leave it at that. And here, basically what I've done here is I've just taken raw numbers. Okay. Now these are aggregate numbers or IE they've been refined because we've computed percentages. Right. And I'm just going to leave those alone. I'm not going to do anything with them. 
but I am going to do this. I'm going to click on cell A5. I'm going to click Copy, and then I'm going to click Format Painter, and I'm going to format that whole row there so everything looks nice and pretty. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put the commas in where they belong, and that means I'll have to resize that cell. Same story here. That's why I get the little. Same story here. And I've left these two blank because they're summary data. Now, if I wanted to, I could get the average of those or the median of them. So I would get a grand average or I could get a median of these for percentage of growth. Uh, then I have to create another label below them. So I'm going to leave these blank and not do anything with them. Now here in row 14, I'm going to size those up a little bit. Just getting the thing ready. Okay. And there we go. So I saved the file. Okay, folks, now we're ready to do a little bit of charting. Okay. And I'm just going to highlight cell A5 down to. Um, F12. And I'm going to click insert and I'm going to do chart. And we'll come over here and they have recommended charts. We'll click on that. Let's see what they've recommended for us. And here's that nice clustered bar chart. So we'll click OK. And as I mentioned yesterday, you don't want to crowd up the screen. So we're going to create a new tab. Then I'm going to copy this chart. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it into this new tab. So it says Outlook, I'm going to change that. We talked about that yesterday. I'm going to rename that data. And then on sheet one, I'm going to call this, rename it chart one. All right. And then I can just cut that. I'm good to go. Now, just to make this nice, I'm going to go ahead and put all borders inside. Okay. And then I'm going to save the file. Okay, now we're ready to go to chart one, and we and also yesterday. Uh, I'm going to put a tab color and I'm going to stick with a, a dark green and then another tab color, which would be a nice dark gold. So I have my green and gold. All righty. And then I can use some other colors as I go along. But let's look at this chart title now. Let's size this out so that it's, and it's not badly done. Uh, I want to click down here in the bottom and I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to click bold. And I'm going to increase them to 10. Okay, so this is the legend. We're going to talk about these for just a minute so I can give you a quick tour around this thing in terms of what you're looking at. This is, a, this is the legend. This is, of course, the vertical axis. 
This is, of course, the horizontal axis. And we can add some chart elements. Okay, let me get my handy dandy eraser out and we'll do that. Okay. Now, I'm going to click on the, click inside the chart. Okay. And now I'm going to go over to the design. And if you look here in the far left corner, you're going to see add chart elements. So I'm going to start with the chart title. And I'll, I can have her either above the chart. Okay. Or I can have it a centered overlay. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave that be. And I can simply chart, click on that, and then I'm gonna put in the title. And I'm looking at figure 3.32 in page 463, and this would be the number of computed uh, number of computer related jobs. And they have 2016 and 2026. And here we're dealing with 2010 and 2020. So I put 20, 10, and 2020. And there it is. Now I want to do some work with that. I can either right click and do the, the you know, do a style or font or outline. And I'll just do the font. And I'm going to keep it at size 14, but I'm going to make it bold. And, and there we are. Okay. So far, so good. So I have the chart title. I've done some work with the legend. And again, We'll probably want to size this out a little bit more. Okay. And now we've done the chart title and we've done a bar chart. Now, If we want to, we can click on change the chart type and get some more ideas. And we can look at clustered columns. So we'll do that. We'll click it in columns and see what that looks like. That's the nice feature here. We're not going to break it. This is really what we're working with. And we'll click OK. And so we see for each of these job categories. Now let's click on that, that uh, the uh, labels for each of those types of jobs. And let's bold them up. And I may want to make them a, a 10. No. We'll keep them at bold. And so I can see the per job title, uh, the estimated number of jobs. I can see the number of uh, 
for 2010 and the number of new jobs. And this is the estimated growth 2020. And we're and we have a percentage growth of jobs. Let's see what that is. And that percentage growth is not showing up there. So I'm going to click inside the in. I'm going to click inside of um, the legend. And on the let, and I want to click select data, and I'm gonna get rid of percent of growth of new jobs. I'll click OK, and let's see what I've got. Well, I still have that there, don't I? Let's go to select data. And percentage growth, so I'm going to check that. Check and check everything here. And then I'm going to click percent growth. I'm here in the dialog box and I'm going to remove it. I'll click OK. Yep. I would kill everybody, didn't I? Let me get this, select the data. Okay, what's happened here is the, the data for the new job, number of new jobs has not been selected. So let's click that and see what we get. Is the number of jobs. These are the estimates. These are the number of jobs. And the number of new jobs. And we have the median pay. So this is a nice old chart, but it's got some confusing things. And number of computer-related jobs, 2010 and 2020 and 2010. Um, again, these are the number of jobs in 2010. These are the estimated jobs in 2020. And then the gray is the number of new jobs. And then this is the median pay. So we're gonna go back in here to the series. We're gonna go on the select data. And I've got the number of jobs, the estimated number of jobs, the number of new jobs, and I don't want the growth, percentage growth in jobs, and I don't want the median pay. And See, I don't want medium pay. And so I'll click OK. Let's see what we got here. Trying to remove those. All right, got it done. Now, here we go. Very good. Now, this says what it means. It means what it says. And we've added the chart title as they wanted us to do over there on page 463. Okay, and we've done, we've, we've formatted the horizontal 
we've formatted the um, the horizontal axis and as well as the title. And we don't have a vertical axis, and we don't really need one here for the simple reason it's it's pretty apparent that <laughs> these are you know number of jobs. If you really want to put it in there, you could, but there's no point because you've already identified that, and this shows us the number of jobs in 2010 for this for systems analysts. Here's the projection, the estimate. And then this is the number of new jobs. Now we have a nice chart that's all cleaned out. And we can determine then if we want to use, if we want to show the data. And if we're interested, okay, it's pretty simple. I'm going to look at the estimated number of new jobs. I'll click on that. And I'm going to add data labels. And I can add data call out. So let's see how it looks. And it's still a bit crowded. But you can see, well, it's still very crowded. So I don't want to use the call outs. I don't have to use them. Now, there's a simple thing if I want to do, I have the data. Okay. And I can always just simply copy these columns. I can copy A5 over here to D5. Okay, control C. And I can put the data aside or under the chart. Now I'm just going to click here and I'm going to paste it in. And then I'll size these out a little bit so you can see them. And I'll just put the data in fact I'm going to call this the data table. So I have a tab that shows the data. Okay. And then over here in chart one, I have the data that I used for chart one. And we're good to go. So we've worked with the axis. And I'm going to come over here on this axis. And I'm going to go ahead and bold it up. Font, bold, and I'm going to come up in the size to 10. Fire on the size here and click 10. There we have it. I still need to resize these over so I get the full job title. Okay. And I want to squinch this back as far as I can. There we go. And I can save a file. And I have, I've formatted the, the axis title. I've formatted the two, the Y axis, which has the numbers. And then I have of jobs and then I have formatted the horizontal I, I've formatted the horizontal axis which is the which are the names of each of the uh, uh, of the types of job computer related jobs 
And then at the bottom, I've formatted the legend. And I have the data table over here. And there I am. So I've done some nice work. Now I'm going to take data table up here and I'm going to, I'm just going to click on job title. I'm going to click copy, format painter, and boom. There we go. Okay. In fact, the, the word data table is redundant. So let's just put these are the data. And so we've done chart number one. We're gonna do a second chart this time, okay? And this time we're gonna deal with the percentages. Now over on page 465, the authors uh, have us do a, a pie chart. Now, So we're going to go back over here to the data. And I'm just going to the data page and I'm going to click insert. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click insert a pie or a donut chart. And they have used a pie. Okay. I have this blank pie, and now I have to do, now I'm going to get the data for it. Okay. And so I'm going to click on and I want to right click it and get, yeah, right click there and I'm going to select my data. Okay. And you'll see I start with the legend series. And I'm going to add what did they do over there. They did the new jobs. Okay. So I'm going to uh, number of new jobs. And then I'm gonna get the data values. Okay. Now I wanna do the axis label for the horizontal and I'm gonna click edit. And I'm gonna get the data labels. I click OK. And this is the number of new jobs. I want to change this to look nice. So it'll say um, new jobs. I'm going to click end. Uh, number of new jobs. Okay, I'm gonna re redo this. Number of, of new computer related jobs. You said, now why did you choose percentages? Because it, it looks like the book Well, no, we're still doing the number of new, new computer related jobs. Um, actually, what we've done is we've used job growth. Number of new computer related jobs. And we're not through with that title. So 
we'll also want to put no we're okay now I'm going to click and create a new data sheet and I'm going to rename this chart two real original I know and I'm going to use a different tab color and I think I'm going to use a blue I'm going to take chart one and move it around. You'll see when I moved it, show you real quickly. I just put my cursor here. Now I'm in I'm chart, I'm working in chart two. I'm going to go back to my data chart. I'm going to copy this. And then I'll go to the chart two and I'll paste it in. I'm going to do some more work. First thing I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to bold that up. All right. Come down here. Same story. All right. In fact, I may want to up the size there just a hair. No, just a 10 would be good. That's good enough. And I'll size the chart out a little bit. I could just, okay. Now, these are the number of computer related jobs. I have the legend out here. I have my title. And now I want it to show the data in those. do the data labels and I'm going to add data labels and I want to format the data labels. Uh, let's see here, the size and properties. I don't have any effects. Go in line. I'm going to go above here and I'm going to bulb these up. And the, up and home. And I'm going to resize them. Okay. And I can use the grappling hook. Theoretically to resize this. I'm supposed to be able to. Now I think what I'm doing here instead is And I could put percentage in. And I have some choices. I can put the best fit. I'm going to try outside in. That works. That's nice. I went over and formatted the data loads. Let's look at this for just a second. This is pretty. It shows me the number of new computer related jobs 
and I see the raw number plus the percentage accounted for by each of these. Now, I'm gonna size this out a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna do it diagonally because I'm dealing with a pie chart. And I'm also doing this because I want to go ahead and make those legends a little bit more easy to see. I'll make them a 12. And there we be. It's not bad. Um, I could take these up to a 10. And I may want to align that title. I'm going to align it to, well, no, the center. Um, and that's the number of computer related jobs. So that's 2010. Okay. Now I'm trying to get this a little bit bigger. To size it out. So I'm going to do this. That starts to get much better. There we go. I may even need to come over a little bit more. All right. Now I have a nice, nicely done little chart here, pie chart. So I've expressed these. I have the raw numbers plus the percentage. And I did that so I don't have to use a data table over here. And so basically we've done that figure 3.3, we've formatted the chart. If I want to, I can click it here and then I'm gonna click design on the chart. And I can change the colors if I want. I don't need to. Um, this is what I have right now. If I wanted, I could go to this, okay? If I think that's gonna communicate better and look nicer, but it's crowded looking to me. We have this option I don't like. This I don't like at all. Here's this weird looking thing. Don't ever do that at work. You'll get, just make it look like a goofball. So we'll come back over here. And we'll just keep going back till we get to our original chart. which is good enough. I will size it out just a little bit more. Here we have it. And things are discernible. You can see the raw number plus the percent. And we have the pie. And it's not, you know, it's not uh, terribly, it's, it's nicely done. Let's put it like that. And some changes and quick layouts. Let's look at that. I have some choices there. This will show us what it looks like. This just, this just shows percentages. So it doesn't help us much because we don't have the raw numbers. Then you got this, which is useless. And we got everything crammed in there. That's nice, but you don't have the raw numbers. That's nice, but there's nothing there. <laughs> so 
we'll stick with what we've got. He asked me, what are these little doodads? This is, I can add chart elements. These are chart styles. That's a little. And I can add filters. So what are chart filters all about? Well, it's pretty simple. This is a nice little feature in Excel that's fantastic. And I think I'm probably walking us ahead. But let's look at it for a moment. You'll notice when I, I'll put my cursor off, I put my cursor inside the chart and look what happens. I get this chart filter. Now this means if I want, I can do some selective comparison. So I can deselect everything, okay? And then I can just simply choose a particular category. And I can apply it. Now this is a great feature if I wanted to have a series of static presentations of this chart, say in a report, or this is a really nice little tool to have if you're on the fly, you're doing a presentation, or you're in a collaborative situation with a group of other people, you could look at these, those two. You could select everybody and apply that and go back to the, to the original. Select all of them. You're back to the original. Then I, if I want to choose, if I compare these two, I deselect. And I apply. Okay. It's a nice, nice feature. And what we have is fine. So we've done everything there between 463 and, and, and 467. If you want, as I always, you can use this as your guide, okay? This is what I would upload for the second hands-on. Um, we've done everything here they asked us to do, but if you want, you can go step by step by step through the hands-on exercise of the book. Formatted data labels, we've done a pie chart, et cetera. Now, I'm gonna talk about this for just a minute. It's okay, why did we do the pie chart? Well, first of all, okay, here we looked at the numbers of jobs in computer-related jobs, 2010 versus 2020. In fact, I need to change this. Here, I'll go to the end. Okay, that's much that's much better. But I have the raw data. 
okay? And here, so folks can see the, the estimate versus the new jobs and, and the, the, the number of jobs, the estimated jobs, and the new jobs. I don't like the title here, so. So I have those three types there. Uh, so I, I want to make sure this is uh, number of computer related jobs 2010. I'm going to move this to the end. New jobs and 2020. Not the best telegraphing, but not too bad. And we've worked some more with the tabs. We've colored them. We start with the data. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that, I'll cut that. And then we have chart one, which shows the data. And we have chart, chart two. And we could show the data if we wanted to, but we really don't need to, because we have the legend that explains what types of jobs, and then the number of computer-related jobs, and then the percentage. And we could, if we wish, do another chart where we looked at the, these are the number of new computer-related jobs, and so on. And I think we've pretty much done what we wanted to. Let's look at this and I just wanna make sure, I wanna click select data and I got the number of new jobs and then I've got, okay. And then I've got the different types of jobs, so I'm in good shape. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do one more chart. And And that is, I'm gonna click insert. Um, and we're gonna do a pie chart. Do each pie. And then I, I need to select the data. And I'm going to start with my legend series. And it's going to be the 2020 estimate of jobs. And then my series data will be right here.
Now for the horizontal axis, I'm going to edit it. Look at it, and the we we'll get these job we we'll get these job titles. I'll click OK. And we can just simply uh, add data labels. And then do the sizing, et cetera. And we'll call this chart three. I know it's amazing, isn't it? And chart three, I'm gonna re I'm going to give it a, a tab color. And I think I'll go to this red. I'll move it behind chart two. Back up here, I'm going to copy this table. I'm going to paste it in. And I have the estimated number of new jobs. And this just becomes an issue of bolding this up. Okay. I'll bold those. I'll make them an 11. And down here, we we'll bold all that. So make those ten and a half. And in fact, I want to make these a little bigger so it's much easier for the person to take a look at them. See them go. Oh, okay. Okay. And so you got a nice little chart there in terms of the number of new jobs. And I don't, and I have the data. Okay. And I could try to express these as percentages. Let's click on. And we can do call outs if we want. We could format the data series. Let's click at that for just a second. Nah, believe them. Now we don't have percentages here because we didn't compute the percentages of the, the estimate, but that's okay. We have a nice chart here. And as you can see, we could continue on with this. So we have a nice presentation of the raw data. Then we have a series of charts. And notice how I've started with the first chart was the bar chart, okay? Which made more sense as I was comparing. And then I simply went then to pie chart same story there. I could have made these all bar charts and you could just click in and change the chart type and see what it looks like, play around with it. You simply click in here, for example, go to the design and they give you some quick layouts. Let you see what they look like. That one's nice with the points it needs to be, I'm gonna click that, but that's going I'm gonna have to take this. There we go, that's not too bad. But not as pretty and intuitive as what we had. Okay. 
That'll do it. Now this, I'm going to save this file. And then I'm going to upload it. Over in a canvas. So I'll just let you see some of the behind the scenes stuff that I do. Here in the files. I'll upload it from my desktop. There's the October 3rd file that, that's for October 3rd. Files uploaded. I'll go over here to the modules. And I'm going to add it. And there's that at item. Okay. So to reiterate very quickly, and then I'll end this. For this assignment, right? this assignment you're going to want to upload. Well, let me just go back here for a second. For hands, uh, for this hands-on Microsoft Excel hands-on number six, which is pages 448 to 452, which we did in class, let me get here for a minute here. I want to go back to annotate. I want to get that one little smudge off. There we go. I'm going to use this file. It's not marked 10-1-2019. Then the one that's marked October 3rd, 2019 is the file for Excel hands-on number seven. And I'm gonna see if I can add a little uh, descriptive thing. So I think what I'm gonna do is a little text for a second. text header. Let's show the behind the scenes work I have to do. I go Excel. Six. I'll add the item, and then I'll come up here and put this here. Um, let's see for hands-on number six. I need to go back and edit this. Excel hands-on number six. Update it. And I'll publish it so you can see it. And then I'll make a second one just to be able to duplicate these, but you can't. And so I'll make another X 
text header. Yeah, upload this for Excel. Hands on number seven. So I have the item. And then I'll scoot it right up here. Okay. And there they are. And it's published. So you can see it. So as I said, Upload this file for hands-on number six. Upload this file for hands-on number seven. So we've done those two hands-ons, working with charts, formatting them. Having big fun. Okay, folks, that'll do it. And I'm gonna stop the recording and end the meeting. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.